Welcome to Believer's Night at Emmanuel Light of the World. Let's engage in time of worship and then the word by our pastor, Rakia Wright. God, we love you and we adore you and we appreciate you. We honor you in this place today because you are our risen king. You are our risen savior. And our Bibles declare that you have never lost a battle. So we just came to declare your victorious name this morning. Accept our offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You have won.
good evening, Emmanuel, Light of the World. Um, I'm so excited to just be able to come before you guys um, today uh, for our Believers Night. So every Tuesday for the month of June with our light groups, um, uh, have ended last week. Uh, so for the entire month of June, we're asking that everyone um, joins in on our Believers Night every Tuesday night at seven o'clock as we um, kind of go through a series called Committed to the Call committed to the call. And it goes right in line with what our men will be discussing this month, because this month is men's month. And so our men will be talking about um, the committed man. And so we're just kind of piggybacking off of, of what they're doing in this month and believing that the Lord has something in store for us um, all through Believer's Night with um, committed to the call. And so I'm so glad that you all are here. Y'all are joining us today. And I believe that the Lord uh, has something that he wants to share um, really in light of everything that is going on right now in our um, society right now, right in our country. Um, the things that we are dealing with, with the rioting, uh, with the looting, with um, just so much aggression, anger um, in the city streets and uh, especially the city of Atlanta where we live. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's very disturbing to a, to a lot of us, it's, it's very disturbing uh, to me, but I can't say that it is shocking. Um, it's disturbing, but I can't say that it is shocking because I know that the enemy is at work. And I believe that wherever there is disunity, wherever there is a divide, wherever there is division, wherever there have been walls built um, beyond races, beyond cultures and things of that nature, um, that is the, uh, the greatest playing field for the enemy to begin to disturb, to begin to disturb, to begin to cause um, um, all types of um, uh, uh, disturbances, you know, within our, our society, within our, our country. And so that's, that's his playing field. Wherever there is disunity, then you better believe that the enemy is at work and he's wanting to, uh, to do all sorts of things in our midst. And so I believe that we're seeing um, the result of, of, of this. We're, we're seeing the, the result of this that we've, you know, seen for years you know, and um, and I believe that the Lord is going to share something with us um, that will, will kind of help us as believers tonight um, as we navigate through this. And even as we're raising young African-American children, young African-American um, boys, to be specific, um, you know, teaching us in his word how we can navigate through this um, for the long haul and to be able to see um, even differences um, from a, from from a long haul result. Yes, we vote. Yes, we um, you know um, choose the right leaders and put the right leaders in place. But I believe that God's word has something to share with us today. Um, that I believe if you would receive it today um, and grab hold of it today, then I believe for the long haul that you can leave something uh, strong and steady in your family for generations to come. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for, um, first of all, for covering us. We thank you for protecting and keeping us, Lord God. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you would just continue to move amongst our, our country. Lord God, with everything that we are facing right now, Father, we know, Lord God, that you are the one, Lord God, that is able to bring change. You are able to change the hearts of men. You're able, Lord God, to change the temperature of our country right now, Father, and we thank you that you've given us the tools as believers, Father, to be able to pray, to be able to fast and intercede, Lord God, on behalf of our country. And Father, we just put those those tools, we put those things to use in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you that we are not believers who would just sit and do nothing, but that we would rise up, Lord God, and just begin to um, to to pray and intercede, Lord God, on behalf of our country. And we believe, Lord God, that you are able to move in ways unimaginable. And Father, that you're able to bring a lasting change, Lord God, to what we have struggled with and dealt with for years. Father, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. So I want us to go ahead and turn in our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to look uh, this evening at the fourth chapter, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start at verse one. And we're not going to get through this entire passage today, but we are we are going to start and then next week we'll we'll pick up and then the week after we'll just continue um, with this series committed to the call, committed to the call. And so verse one in chapter four reads as this, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience showing forbearance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Now, I'm going to stop right there and we're going to pick up in just a second. But I just want us to look at the very first few verses. Um, as, as Paul is speaking to the church, he's saying, you know, therefore, since I am a prisoner to the Lord, that means I'm under his lordship. I'm under his rule. You know, I'm a, I'm a prisoner unto, his, un, unto the Lord. And he's entreating us. He, he's He's um, encouraging us strongly as the church. He's encouraging us. He's enticing us strongly as the church. He says, because I am a prisoner of the Lord, I want to encourage you as my fellow believers. Watch this. To walk in a manner or to live in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Amen. I'm just going to park right there because we've seen people in our country with high callings. The president of the United States have has a very high calling on his life. The police officers that are supposed to be protecting and and covering our country and, and fellow citizens, they have a high calling on their life. The judges, the judicial system, they have a high calling on their life. And what Paul is saying, because I am a prisoner of the Lord and because you have a, a high calling, he's saying live in worthy, live in a way or in a manner that is worthy of the call. Now, many of us are, are, are disturbed because um, we have, you know, uh, police officers and we have people in high callings that in our belief and that some people's belief that they are not living in a manner, not all of them, but some of them are not living in a manner that is worthy of their calling. Now, I'm not saying that they are perfect people by no means, because none of us are perfect. And I'm not saying that, 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 that they are even should live in a way because they are worthy. Um, but what I believe Paul is speaking and even saying, and we can even relate this to our, to what we are going through right now, that those who are in high positions, their position is worthy. Being the president is a worthy position. Being a vice president is a worthy position. Being a police officer is a worthy position. Being a judge is a worthy position. Being a pastor is a worthy position. And in our eyes, the individuals who serve in those high positions ought to live in a way that is worthy of the call that is worthy of their position, that is worthy of their calling. And so when we live in such a way that is contrary to our calling, that does not hold up to the standard of our calling, then of course we have issues with that, right? We have problems with that. Their badge and their position should be taken away, right? We, 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 we come up against that because we see and we realize that, that people 
are not living worthy of their calling. There's a standard. I hear people say all the time, there's an oath that they've taken. There's a standard that 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 they um, has agreed to, to, to live up to. And when they respond and act in certain ways that is contrary to the high calling, they're not living in a way that is worthy of their calling. No, they're not perfect humans, but their position is worthy. Are we seeing this today? So I wanted us to kind of relate this to what Paul is speaking to when he's speaking exactly to the church. So let's let's not look at those who are in the world, because, yes, they have a high calling. They have high position. But what Paul is speaking is that we as believers, we have the highest calling. As believers. Why? Because our Lord and our Savior is, is, is at the highest position. And we are prisoners, or I, I don't like to use the word prisoners, but we are we are uh workmen under the leadership of our Lord. Paul says, I am a prisoner unto the Lord. And our Lord being at the highest position. And as we serve and as we submit ourselves and as we are called children of God, then we are also at a high position. We're at a high calling. Matter of fact, we understand that our president and our and our police officers and, and all in the judge and lawyers and all of these, they're, they're at high positions. But watch this. As a believer, your calling, your calling as a believer is higher than that calling of, of, of just someone that we see in high regard, right? Not saying that we don't have to submit to, not saying that we don't have to submit to our leadership. We submit to our leadership in this earth, in this earth realm, but our calling as believers, we have a high calling because this calling is given to us um, by God. And so with this high calling, Paul is saying that we ought to live in a way, even when nobody else in the world is living in the way that is worthy of their calling. Right. He says, as believers, we ought to live in a way we ought to walk in a way in a manner that is worthy of the call. Amen. We have been called by God. And God has said, I know that y'all are not perfect. I know that we're going to make, but we ought to be living in a way that is worthy of the call that Jesus Christ has given to us, that our Lord has given to us. Amen. So we first have to understand and identify that we also have a call. We have a call and, and God is calling us to live in a way that is worthy of the call. Well, how do you do that, pastor? Amen. Well, how do we do that? Because there's so many of us as believers, we, we have the title of believer. We have the title of Christian. But if we could just be completely honest, a, a lot of the times we are not living in a way that is worthy of the call. Right. We're living in a way that is that is that that looks just like the world. We're living in a way that looks just like the people in the world. We respond in the way just like the world. And God is saying, no, I have given you a high calling. And I expect for you to walk in a way that is worthy of the call that is on your life. As a pastor, if I were to do some things that were just contrary to the word, there'll be so many people that point their face. I thought she was a pastor. I thought she was a pastor, you know, because their expectation of me and they should have an expectation of me to live in such a way that is worthy of the call. But the thing about it is not just pastors, not just apostles, not just bishops, not just teachers, not just evangelists. But if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you ought to be living in a way that is worthy of the call that is upon your life. How many of y'all know that you have been called by God? Say hallelujah. And then I love that Paul shows us how we do this. 
He says, I'm not just giving you this call. I'm not just giving you this command. I'm not just telling you what you ought to be doing and not show you what this looks like as you walk, as you live out your life. He says it like this in verse two. He says, with all humility and gentleness, amen, with patience, I mean, some of us struggle with that patience. We struggle with, with that humility. We struggle with that gentleness. He says, showing forbearance to one another in love, walking in forgiveness, being tolerant of people, being patient with people. Even if they are doing something that is contrary, even if they are doing something that, that is, that is hateful, he says, being tolerant, being, having forbearance with one another in love. He says, being diligent to preserve the unity. Amen. He's speaking to the church and watch what this unity is. He says to preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Amen. For years, our, our church, uh, the, the body of Christ, th there has been divisions and divides even within the body. Let's not even speak about the world uh, as a whole, but even as the church, there has been divides. There has been walls. There is division. Our church, as much as we would, we, we would like it to, to be perfect, the church as a whole has some work that needs to be done. Can y'all just agree with that? There's some work that needs to be done in the church. But I love that the Lord gives us um, all that we need to begin to see the work be done in the church. Amen. None of these things that, that, that are mentioned in the word of God, none of these things that are mentioned in this scripture, um, when he speaks about being called and living in a way that is worthy of the calling, He's talking about living with patience and living in humility and living with forbearance and living in love. These things are not attainable, watch this, without the Holy Spirit. We might be able to walk in love and walk in this and walk in that for just a moment, but we begin to see the cycle of hate and discord begin to come back you know, and to show its ugly head in our lives. There's only so much willpower that, that we can have. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. These are fruit of the Holy Spirit. These things that he's speaking of, humility and gentleness and forbearance and love and all of these things. This is the work and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And he's doing these things to bring the church into a place of unity. Amen. If we ever want to see change in the world, there has to be change that is happening in the church. And it starts with the submission or being submitted to the move of God and the move of his spirit on the inside of us. There's a work that the Holy Spirit has been sent to do on the inside of you. And he wants you to, to yield to the work, to yield to the work of the Holy Spirit so that you can live in a manner that is worthy of the call that is upon your life. That you might be uh, in unity with the Spirit, with the bond of peace. Say hallelujah. Amen. So there's a unity here. There's a unity of the Spirit. And when we're all submitted to the move of God and to the empowerment of the Holy Spirit working and operating in our life, that's where true unity is developed. That's where true unity is seen. That's where the power of God can begin to move through the church. That's when the power of God can begin to move through our world, through our nation. I heard somebody say, well, where is the church in all of this? Where is the church in all of this and everything that is going on? Where is the church? And someone mentioned to them that the church is out there. They're praying and they're doing things and they're doing things and they're moving. Amen. And, 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 and that is true. But I believe that the Lord wants to do a lasting work on the inside. And the world is looking for the light. The world is looking for something that is opposite of what they're displaying. 
because what, what they're displaying is not going to bring about a, 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 a true change. Amen. Because true change comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the work of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Yes, we can say that 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 this race needs to have more love and this race needs to need, needs to uh, uh, be more gentle and this race needs to change their mindset and this race needs to change this. And we can speak all of that. But a lot of those things are impossible without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to begin to move. And it starts with the Holy Spirit moving within the church. It starts with us going out and making disciples. It starts with the church truly being the light and the example. Because what we need is a move of God. What we need is the power of God. And God works best where there is unity in the spirit. Oh, come on, y'all. If we really want to see the, the power of God move, he moves where there is unity. If we want to see riots and fires and deaths and murders, he moves, the enemy moves where there is discord. But if we could ever become unified in the spirit and live in a way that is worthy of the call and live in a way that brings glory to God then we will begin to see the power of God move in such a way upon the earth. Yes, we need, uh, um, you know, we need to vote. Yes, we need to, um, you know, choose the right leaders. Yes, we need to exercise those things. Amen. But if we really want to see it begin to see a change, it starts with, with, with living in a way that is worthy of the call. Amen. Teaching our children to live in the way that is worthy of the calling that is upon their life as children of God, as disciples of God. It starts in the home. It starts with bringing glory to the Lord with how we live our life because God moves. The power of God moves where there is unity in the spirit. Say hallelujah. Well, praise God. My prayer is that you all receive the message today for Believer's Night. And I'm telling you, we are just getting started. Ephesians 4 has so much on the inside of it that I know that it's going to truly bless our lives as we continue to dig in each and every week for the month of June. Um, my prayer is that you all would truly be believers who live in such a way that is worthy of the call that is upon your life. And I know that as we begin to live in unity with the Spirit, that we're going to see some major change taking place in the body of Christ and a major move of God upon the earth. You all be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll catch you again next week.